Hi, I am Dr. Nareesh Zadho, Consultant Medical Oncology at Narayana Super Speciality Hospital, Guwahati. Today I am here to talk about the role of chemotherapy in the management of cancer. Now, cancer is a complicated disease which requires multimodality treatment in order to achieve best result in a given patient. Surgery, radiation and chemotherapy are the three pillars of treatment of cancer patients which are used in different sequence. In recent years, chemotherapy has come to attain a central position in the management of majority of the cancers because it is the only systemic therapy that addresses the disease not only at the local site but also at the distant sites. In order to understand the role of chemotherapy in the treatment of cancers, we need to separate solid tumours like lung cancer or stomach cancer from hematolymphoid malignancies like leukemias and lymphomas. Solid tumours can again be categorised as curable and incurable. In solid tumours that are curable, surgery and radiation forms the most important component of the therapy. However, addition of chemotherapy to surgery and radiation significantly increases the cure rate over and above surgery or radiation alone. This combination with surgery or radiation can be done in three different manners. Number one, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Here, chemotherapy is given before the definitive surgery or radiation. It is given in situation when the tumor is either too large or the disease burden is too high so that surgery is either difficult or it can lead to extensive morbidity. The purpose here is to shrink the tumor so that the subsequent treatment becomes easy. Number two, adjuvant chemotherapy. Here, the chemotherapy is given after the completion of surgery or radiation. The purpose of giving chemotherapy after the entire tumor tissue has been removed is to kill the remaining invisible microscopic cells that will be present at the local and the distant sites. This reduces the recurrence rates and increases the overall cure rates significantly. Number three, concurrent chemoradiation. In this situation, chemotherapy is given along with radiation. In this setting, the dosing and the scheduling of the chemotherapy is such that the chemotherapy acts as a radio sensitizer and it increases the efficacy of radiation. For solid tumors that are not curable, chemotherapy forms the backbone of the treatment. In this scenario, chemotherapy is given in a predefined schedule and the purpose here is to improve the quality of life, relieve the patient of his symptoms, provide good palliative care and prolong the life of the patient as much as possible. In this scenario, apart from chemotherapy, targeted therapy and immunotherapy have also been used in many solid tumours. When it comes to hematolymphoid malignancies, chemotherapy again form the backbone of the therapy with hardly any role of surgery and radiation. The major difference in the role of chemotherapy in solid tumours versus hematolymphoid cancers is that in hematolymphoid cancers, chemotherapy alone can be curative. As a result of this, majority of the patients suffering from hematolymphoid cancers will end up receiving chemotherapy alone. So this is about the role of chemotherapy in the overall management of cancers. The use of chemotherapy in cancer patients with respect to its dosing, its scheduling, the timing of chemotherapy with respect to other treatment modalities like surgery and radiation requires expertise and a deep knowledge of the disease process. That is the reason why it is always better to get these treatments done in an experienced tertiary care center with experienced hands.